Hi, I just came over from Hamburg. Um, and just to make one thing sure from the very beginning, uh, of course I'm not late, right? These things only happen to students. So if someone standing on this part of this hall is late, he or she just made use of uh, cum tempore, right? That's okay. So okay, just to make that sure from the very beginning. Uh, who of you, how's my PowerPoint going? Okay, working on it. Um, yeah, I just send it to them, so uh, uh, jokes on me. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. How has the week been so far? <laughs> yeah, I see some guys applauding. That's cool. Okay. Um, so who of who of you guys is a Lord of the Ring fan? Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, now bear with me, that question makes more thin, sense than you believe. Isn't it funny that we all, or most of us from, from what I saw so far, love Lord of the Rings, and we all grew up in a capitalistic society, and still, we're told that the guy who builds the capitalistic dream society is the bad one, right? Doesn't make too much sense if you want so, or if you want to put it in a different frame, it's all a matter of perspective, which is really what I'm going to talk to you guys about um, as you're at the beginning of a fascinating journey um, that at least should enable you to question your own perspective and to find some new ones. So, if everything is about perspective, why not make sure that you change yours? What is the world that you guys are educated and you're getting educated to live in, to work in, to form, to change, to have an impact on. Just to give you some ideas of why it makes so much sense to change perspective. We're going to Mars, right? Sounds fascinating. It is fascinating. Um, Elon Musk just announced that he is going to do it, which interestingly enough, from a sociological perspective, um, made Boeing announce that of course they are going to Mars as well, right? And they always knew they are going, they just didn't want to tell anybody before Elon Musk told the world he's going, but okay. And we're going there. Artificial intelligence. The guy down there is a board member uh, of a venture capital private equity investment firm in Hong Kong. That gentleman in artificial intelligence has already made two major investment decisions in this year. He literally, legally, is at the same level of that organization than the rest of the board members. He is an AI, though. And pretty fascinating to me, maybe because I'm older than you guys, um, <laughs> We're working on longevity. Um, we're growing up into a world of which some people, like Cambridge University's Aubrey de Grey, uh, believe that the uh, human lifespan, of which you always thought it would be around 100, 120, <clears throat> that that barrier is about to fall. Um, and Google is putting quite huge amounts of money into that. Um, so are others. So you're studying to be prepared to work and have impact and build your careers and your dreams and your passions in a world that right now on the Leuphana campus might not look, might not remind you every day and so your classes might not that this is a fascinating time, but it really is. We're going to Mars, we might stay there 
for a couple of hundred of years, uh, each of us. And if we don't, we might send robots. There is a University of Oxford study pointing out that one third of the jobs in knowledge-based economies like ours uh, won't be around in 10 years anymore. That, that makes one third of you guys uh, having a career choice at some point to make um, or the company that's going to hire you making a choice between you and an artificial intelligence. Just make sure that you're cool enough to get that job. Or if you don't, come up with your own project. <laughs> While changing that kind of perspective, I believe it makes a lot of sense to um, include diversity. In all different kinds, uh, diversity comes along. I understand that that topic is, has been around with you guys for a few days now and is going to stay. So these are just a few fragments, right? Um, heavy metal management, best-selling management book. Pretty cool. It only consists of lyrics from heavy metal bands. <laughs> um, and believe me, uh, there is a huge knowledge and, and wisdom in that. Um, the gentleman, uh, which looks more like a unicorn over there, Stuart Cameron, um, he's the co-founder, a good friend of mine, the, the co-founder of Sticks and Stones, Europe's largest career uh, and diversity summit for the LGTBI community. For some reasons now, he asks me for years to come and moderate that summit, which I'm, which I'm happily doing. Now, when we did that for the first time in Berlin, uh, we realized that out of 3,000 people that came to that LGTBI conference, most of them were heterosexual young women. Now, that was interesting for us, right? Because that was not, um, that was not the, the target group of that conference. So we made sure we reach out to them. We use design thinking and all that kind of, you know, blah, blah, modern technology that you're supposed to do, otherwise you're boring and just doing uh, one-on-one sociology. Um, and the point was that, that young women told us they came to that conference because they knew every company that is represented at an LGTBI uh, summit would make sure naturally that they don't have any problems with female leadership, female entrepreneurship, and so on and so on. So by trying to breaking down a barrier for diversity from an LGTBI perspective, what that conference really did was um, targeting male, female gender issues. But that, that's, that's, that's obviously the most obvious way to think about diversity, sexuality, um, and other things. Um, but, but also, it really goes back to basic types of human beings, right? I mean, if you're introverted, that's pretty cool, because you're part of a leading uh, and major uh, economic and also philosophical shift in society. Uh, we build political systems, we have built political systems, economical systems, uh, media, all these things uh, around a specific type of person who's extroverted, right? Who comes with a presentation that um, he started working on tomorrow mo uh, this morning um, and then jumps out of the cab and comes here and just keeps on telling you guys stuff. That's not for everybody. And now we're changing um, our systems so they can work and can make use of the power and knowledge of people who are introverted. That is a major shift and a major way of looking at diversity as well. Um, finally, um, entrepreneurship. I put on the logo of a company that friends of mine co-founded, Silvia Terra. Um, it's a spin-off of the Yale University School of Forestry. 
it's earning much more money than most e-commerce copycat startups you come across. Those guys made uh, a huge interdisciplinary team and they're using satellite data uh, to um, do some stuff with forest management and make it more data driven. That doesn't sound too cool, right? It's, uh, if you would tell that in a bar in Berlin, everybody would be like, nah, that's not Salando for blah, blah. I would like to build Salando for blah, blah. Um, but they're making more money because they have a more diverse perspective. We ourselves might be an example for that as well. Retrobrain is gamifying um, evidence-based therapies for people suffering from dementia, uh, and that, that goes in the same direction. So make sure you think of diversity as a powerful tool to achieve your goals. And make sure you make it right. Huh? I don't see many Latinos, and I see a gentleman having that Whatever, you got what I, what I mean, right? But at least try it. And try, once you achieve that power, try to make use of it in the real settings and environments you're going to work in. This is a slide I borrowed um, from Professor Yunus, a Nobel Prize laureate, and if you want so, uh, one of the main uh, uh, figures in the social business movement and the basic idea that um, with the power of entrepreneurship you can do more than just earn money. You can earn money as a way of having a sustainable positive impact on the world which means make a more diverse way of entrepreneurship possible combining different types of organizations. That is inside the box, but we might also, keep in mind, we're going to Mars, we might live for centuries, there is artificial intelligence around the corner, virtual reality, all these things, make sure um, we not only try to use diversity to reform the box, but also come up with new, cooler boxes. And Really, that's all at the moment. I wish you the very best years at the Leuphana College. Um, yeah, have a good time. <laughs>Challenges in the background is your favorite music from your youth. Uh, it's all played as a group activity, so social inclusion is something that, that happens. So we, we took a look for, for a year and a half in research on what is there of which we know that it has an uh, evidence-based impact on um, these kind of illnesses. 
uh, that is used in fall prevention and so on and so on. And then we ask ourselves, because most of our teams in our team are gamers ourselves, how can we make use of this new kind of you know, immersion, as the psychologists would say, that comes with gaming to make sure people do that kind of games, right? That's basically it. That's the short version. The long version is a bunch of papers by our academic advisory board. Yeah. Thank you. Any other? There's a question. But you're more than welcome to come and intern with us, right? So we, we always got a bunch of people from Leuphana. I don't know why, but uh, they're pretty cool. <laughs> How important is respect and empathy for your work? Sorry, say again? Respect and empathy. You're just giving me that. <laughs> you're empathic with my work. No. You think so? <laughs> I would love it. And how important is it for your work? It's, incre it, I mean, um, it's incredibly important uh, because we know from neurological research that empathy is somehow the highest level of connection you can have to your fellow human being. That is pretty interesting what the gentleman just, just raised as a topic because we see something that uh, emerging now that, that it has been described as global empathy. Empathy is always connected to um, the technology you're using. Fascinating enough to the communication uh, 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 technology you're using. Uh, we, when we started um, living in tribal areas, only our fellow members of our tribal area were human beings we felt empathic for. Then came um, the press. The press that enabled us to discuss the same news in Lüneburg and at the same time in Munich. So suddenly we started to feel empathic to someone in the same nation state. That was the birth of the concept of a nation state, which is a pretty young concept and as we see nowadays might not be around for a long time. And now we see something that Jeremy Rifkin describes as global empathy, the phenomenon that if someone since uh, if someone in, uh, in Haiti who was just struggled by some kind of natural disease skypes with you, you feel the same way of connection. That is pretty, pretty fascinating. If you want to go into that, mirror neurons is the academic um, phenomenon we're looking at. Uh, if I hurt myself, uh, and I'm not going to do that, um, the brain of all of you guys for a very short period of time will have the same neurological responses than I have, even if your body is perfectly fine. Um, that is fascinating. Yeah, that's the biological, psychological fundament for empathy. And then again, empathy is the fundament to, you know, come up with cool stuff. I believe that's true. <laughs> you have to open that if you... <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, also actually a, a whole bunch of literature from economics about that, how you get uh, people to uh, engage in something and you have to give it a name, a picture of you know, uh, someone so they can associate with him or with her is really important rather than just a group as a whole. I, I usually tend to not quote economists <laughs> because it's pretty cool to quote scientists instead, but that's an ongoing discussion. Hmm. There are uh, economists that are scientists as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we uh, thank you very much. I guess. Uh, thank you, guys. You, Where are you um, going now? To the Vamos. I follow you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, and have a good time, right? Yeah. Bye. Give him a great hand. <laughs> <laughs>